من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم وقال تعالى وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أنا رحمة المهداة وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام لم أبعث لعالم إنما بعثت رحمة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام My dearest guests, brothers and sisters, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His infinite mercies upon us. From amongst those mercies is the fact that Allah ta'ala placed us in the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi and the Messenger of Mercy. As a reflection and extension of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's rahmah and being a mercy for the entire mankind, this Ummah is uniquely placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also hold this responsibility and this light to be peacemakers and mercy for the entire mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed within this Ummah distinct qualities and characteristics. These were upheld by the earlier Muslims, the earlier generations, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the companions, the Tabi'un, the successors, and the Tabur Tabi'een, the successors of the successors, the era and period of Khairul Qur'un, when the best of nations arise and were placed on this earth, and they carried that light, they carried the Rahmah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they established Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen through their actions. Today, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity as well to be peacemakers, to be representatives of this great Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can mention many fada'il and virtues of this great Rasul from the Quran and Sunnah, but even non-Muslims today are forced to acknowledge the status of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As believers, we already know, and it's our firm faith, no man stepped on this earth better than Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his fada'il in the Quran and many ahadith speak about it. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ana sayyidu wuldi Adam wa la fakh. I am the leader of the entire children of Adam. And there is no boasting, no fakh, no arrogance about this. And as an extension, this ummah, has also been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are akhirun, we come last, but as yawm al qiyamah We would be at the forefront on the day of judgment. But the question, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves as individuals, is am I worthy of this title? Am I worthy of this position? Am I behaving in this way? Each one of us must assess ourselves. Take a muhasaba, and muhasaba is good. We should take a, you know, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O believers, be conscious of Allah, and each soul should check what he is sending forward for tomorrow. This is a verse of the Quran that is strongly encouraging us to check our actions, to assess ourselves, to take account of ourselves, of the actions that we're sending forth and sending forward. Are those actions worthy of representation in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in front of His court on that day in which there is no shade but the shade of Allah ta'ala's throne? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. 
the question I was encouraging us to ask ourselves later is, am I a reflection or an extension of the Rahmah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When I have said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, I testify there is no God but Allah, and I testify Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's servant and messenger. Am I living up to this claim? Am I living up to the standards set by this kalima, the criteria that is set forth? Am I living up to the rahmah and peacemaking that Allah Ta'ala has selected me for? Allah Ta'ala says, you are the balanced and just nation in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, you have been sent for the people because you are the best of people. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. If we look around the world today, are Muslims the best of people right now? In terms of prosperity, in terms of spirituality, in terms of taqwa, in terms of uh, uh, our, our contributions to peace in this, in this world, what position are we in today? As I was mentioning, we have a unique opportunity to be a reflection of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's rahmah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was a reflection of Allah ta'ala's mercy. Allah Ta'ala is mentioned in the hadith, uh, Rahmah was divided into uh, 100 parts, 99 portions. Allah Ta'ala reserved for Himself and one portion is distributed amongst this world. And you see a mother being merciful on their child from that one portion. And Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi was an extension of Allah Ta'ala's mercy. Everything that exists in this world is due to the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. And the completion of this mercy was sending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent for the entire universe. He was not sent to one nation. That's why he is a rahmah greater than the rahmah and the mercy of other anbiya. And a true merciful person is he who is concerned about your well-being. Nobody was more concerned about humans and their salvation than Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who worked day and night and cried in his prayers for me and you. This is something to ponder over and think about. The concern that Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his Ummah. And are we an extension of that? Are we concerned about other people? Are we merciful towards them? Are we concerned about our families and our extended families and our neighbors and our friends? Are we concerned about their well-being in this dunya and in the Akhirah? <clears throat> that's the real world to think about, the Akhirah, because that's an eternal world. This world will come to an end. And somebody who's concerned about your akhirah is your best well-wisher. He is your nasik. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu was concerned about our well-being in the akhirah. He was praying for it. Day and night. Inviting people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Come to this path. You will succeed. Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihun. Say la ilaha illallah, it will transform your lives. You will be successful. Are we an extension of that mercy? That's the question. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such a mercy sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we see mercy in his teachings as well. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he migrated to Medina Munawwara, Allah ta'ala had placed him in a unique position. <laughs> He was considered the authority of the town by Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It was at that delicate moment in time, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demonstrated his peacemaking abilities and the purpose of his bi'tha. And he gathered people of different faiths to sign a treaty. That was Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's peacemaking. <coughs> Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a rahmah for this ummah because Allah Ta'ala says, Ju'idat the uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, one of the blessings that I have over the other prophets is, Ju'idat the al-ardu masjidan wa tahura. The entire earth is a masjid and a source of cleanliness for you. You can make tayammum and you can pray as long as the earth is clean. For previous ummahs, there was hardship. They would have to find a place of worship and they would worship there. For this ummah, while we're traveling, if we find a clean place and prayer time comes, we can pray there. If we don't have any water available after searching for it, and we know that there is no water available within a proximity, certain proximity, then we can make tayammum. 
this is the rahmah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa Allah has mercy on this ummah because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rufi'a an ummati al khata' wa nisyan in a hadith Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, from my ummah, forgetfulness and mistakes have been uplifted. So we are not accountable for forgetfulness and mistakes. This hadith has lots of details. We can't make excuses to neglect a farad and say, I forgot to neglect, uh, I forgot I had to pay my zakah this year. That sort of excuse won't be uh, um, justified in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa demonstrations of mercy was when he said to Ali radiallahu anhu, at the time of a battle, yes, battle might become inevitable. Battle might become inevitable. But before that, try to invite them towards the haq and the truth. لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمِ Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, If one person comes to the faith, comes to guidance, comes to the light through your efforts, through your efforts, it's better for you than red candles, which was a very valuable asset in those days. We can equate it to a, a, a very fast sports car in this day and age. Not an American one, a German one. But anyway, or an Italian. But anyway, so, so going back to the subject is the fact that Nabi Karim Sallallahu was merciful. And his mercy demonstrate, was demonstrated through his actions. We learn also, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before Nubuwa, before prophethood, was a source of mercy. When the floods had destroyed the Ka'batullah, and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam witnessed the people of Quraysh and the communities coming together to resurrect the Ka'batullah, to bring it back up, to reconstruct the Ka'batullah. At the time of placing Al Hajar al Aswad, a dispute took place. Who will place Al Hajar al Aswad? And then it was decided amongst the clans and the tribes that were there that the next person to enter this room will make this decision. And coincidentally, that man was Muhammad Mustafa. And he decided that Al Hajar al Aswad be placed on the cloth, and a member of each tribe hold that cloth, and then Nabi Akbar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam placed Al Hajj al Aswad himself. But in doing so, there was inclusion of every man, every tribe. And this was a way that Nabi Karim brought the people together. The Prophet والسلام, was a source of mercy. The Quran says, and the Hadith says, Nabi Karim says, Ana Nabi Rahma. Ana Nabi Rahma. I am a Nabi and a messenger of mercy. This is the Hadith of Sahih Muslim. In a Hadith mentioned by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Nabi Karim said, Lam ubath la'anan innama bu'ithtu rahmatan. I have not been sent one that scolds people, curses them, and abuses them, slanders them. In fact, I have been sent as a source of mercy for the people. I have been sent as a source of mercy for the people. Nabi Karim conveying the Quran to us is also mercy because the Quran taught us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as long as the world is mentioning the name of Allah ta'ala judgment day will not come on this world as long as the dhikrullah is taking place as the hadith says <coughs> Aisha radiallahu anha was once asked the Prophet sallallahu was there any day more difficult for you than the battle of Uhud because on that day the Nabi Karim was physically hurt and his tooth was martyred Nabi Karim Sallallahu was physically hurt and his tooth was martyred. Was there any day more difficult than this? Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, yes, Ta'if. Ta'if was more difficult than this. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he went to Ta'if in the ninth year after Nubuwa, not Hijrah, Nubuwa, he went to invite the clans and the tribes towards Allah Ta'ala. It was at this point in time where the leaders of the tribes rejected him and when he was walking the streets, they instructed the people to trouble him, harass him, persecute him. And they threw stones at him. They troubled him. And he والسلام, was bleeding profusely. So much so that his feet were stuck to his sandals due to the excess amount of blood. Allah Ta'ala then sent Jibreel والسلام, and said to him, Jibreel, tell uh, uh, Rasulullah that between the two mountains of Ta'if, uh, on, on each side of the mountain, there is an angel, an angel appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And if you wish, Allah Ta'ala will crush the people of Ta'if for their treatment. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Allah, forgive me for my feebleness and weakness in conveying the message. I was not able to fulfill the rights. Oh Allah, if they don't bring guidance, raise from their children one person that will become a Muslim. Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. Oh Allah, guide my people for they do not know. Oh Allah, forgive my people for they do not know. That was the response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you tell me, was he about revenge, personal revenge, personal grudges? No. Never. He was not about personal revenge. He was not about personal grudges. Because we hear from another hadith when Nabi Karim was taking a rest and his sword was hanging from the tree and one of the disbelievers came and took his sword and he said to Rasulullah Sallallahu suddenly woke up and he said to him, who is going to save you now? Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Allah with strength, conviction. Today we don't take Allah's name with conviction, we say God, 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 God this, God that. We don't say Allah, Allah with conviction and love, belief, yaqeen and certainty. When he said Allah, this disbeliever started trembling and the sword dropped. And Rasulullah picked up the sword and said, who's going to save you now? But he والسلام, did not take revenge. And this person seeing the treatment of Rasulullah accepted Islam took the shahad because of the mercy of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was all about peacemaking, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Even in his dialogue with other nations, he was respectful. Allah Ta'ala said to him, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُ وَلَا أَنْعَابِدُونَ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ no beating around the bush. I have my beliefs, you have your beliefs. I don't agree with your beliefs. I don't worship what you worship. Today, when we have dialogues with people of other faiths, sometimes we're not honest enough. And I've noticed this in our interfaith dialogues, we're not honest enough. And we disarm ourselves by not being honest enough. We can be respectful towards our non-Muslim neighbors, without compromising our faith. We don't compromise our faith. We don't compromise on Tawheed. We don't say that, oh, you know, we're all children of God and you're trying to reach God and I'm trying to reach God and we all go paradise together and so on and so forth. That's not what the Quran is telling us. The Quran is telling us to love and respect your neighbors, but at the same time, don't compromise your beliefs. Tawheed and Trinity don't go together. Your salvation does not depend on Jesus dying on the cross. Your salvation is not dependent on that. This is not our belief. We have to be very clear about that. Respectful, but clear. We could not lie about it. Rasulullah was very honest even in his dialogue. When he wrote letters to people of, uh, to, to, to kings of other countries, the first message he sent them was, Aslim, Daslim. Become Muslim, you will be saved. Allah Ta'ala will give you two ajr. Tell your non-Muslim neighbors and peers and people that you have good, good relations with. If you bring faith, you will get two rewards. You believed in Isa alayhi salatu salam. Now when you were informed about Rasulullah salatu salam clearly, properly, you brought faith on Nabiya alayhi salatu salam as well, you will be rewarded twice. Rasulullah salatu salam was such a source of mercy that he got rid of prejudice and, and ethnic boundaries by promoting Bilal radiallahu anhu by mentioning his fada'il, by saying that when I went on the, uh, on the, on the mi'raj, I witnessed Bilal radiallahu anhu, getting rid of all the ethnic boundaries that we have created amongst ourselves. This was a source of rahmah, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When a child is throwing litter on him, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa response is to call this person towards Islam not taking any personal revenge. And we see a reflection of that in the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. When Ali radiallahu anhu was once wrestling with a disbeliever, he had taken him to the ground because he was disrespecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then when he spat at Ali radiallahu anhu, he stood up. He 
left him, and people said, he spat on you. You have more reason now to defeat him. He said, no. Now if I hit him, it's for personal grudge and revenge. And I'm not about taking personal grudges and personal revenge. This was an extension of the mercy of Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have a unique opportunity on how to be merciful people and show mercy and be peacemakers in our communities and societies. Shall I mention it in the second portion of the khutbah? Farakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ana wa iya fi al-ayat wa fi al-hakim inna hu ta'ala jawadun kareem wa mani kufar wa nafu rahim fa astaghfiru inna hu wa lafu rahim my dear respected brothers and sisters of Islam, you are very well aware of the political climate, the tensions, the social tensions Muslims are facing today around the world and most importantly in our own surroundings in the countries that we're living in. We are well aware of cartoons and documentaries that are made against Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slandering Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the chosen Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the last messenger, the mercy for mankind. We're uniquely placed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because we have an opportunity to clarify, we have an opportunity to engage, we have an opportunity to represent amongst non-Muslims. Each one of us stand, sitting here today, including myself standing, we are living amongst non-Muslims. We have non-Muslim neighbors in our communities. We have non-Muslim peers, whether we are in the workforce, whether it's in corporations, whether we are physicians, whether we are at college or university, whether we're going to the grocery store, we are interacting with people of different faiths at all times. We are uniquely positioned and, and placed because we have a unique opportunity to represent who Rasulullah was through our actions. When people see us and they see our skin tone and skin color, most people are already aware that this person is a Muslim. Let me see how this person behaves. Let me see how this person interacts. And we see from the akhlaq of the earlier Muslims, entire countries like Indonesia and Malaysia became Muslim because of the akhlaq and the characteristics and the qualities of the merchants that went to trade there. When they saw them trading with such honesty, integrity, respect, people became Muslim. We have an ideal opportunity. We mustn't sit back and be cornered like we have become. We mustn't become reactionary either. But we must be proactive. We must see this as an ideal opportunity and grasp it with both hands. We must demonstrate our faith through actions. We must show the people who Nabi Akareem Sallallahu Alaihi was through our actions. We have so many opportunities to do this. One of the organizations I'm very impressed with that is worth working very actively in this community, in this city, is ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America. Acting, uh, they, they are working extremely hard to represent Islam to the masses by holding da'wah booths. Remember, da'wah is very important. Da'wah is the shield of a believer. If you don't do da'wah, you've disarmed yourself, you've become weak. And psychologically, people will make efforts on you, you will become madaru. The society will, or your non-Muslim friends will, the culture around you will. If your da'wah is there, if you're making da'wah, you have a shield. Nobody can mess with you. Don't let the society disarm you. Da'wah is very important. It's extremely important. And that's part of the mercy of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he never gave up da'wah, he was concerned about people. Yes, we have a duty to represent Islam and create a community of peace and be peaceful people. But we're also concerned about their hereafter. We're not just concerned about the position of Muslims in America so we can live in more peace and harmony and protecting our religious freedom. But we're also concerned about 
the iman of the people around us. Nice people, some, some of them are very nice people. And we're concerned about the akhirah as well. Da'wah booths are very important for these two reasons. Protecting the religious freedom of Muslims in this country. To create a better atmosphere around us. And also because we are concerned about the akhirah. We want to bring people to the light of Islam. Because this is true light. It will add value to human life when they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will have a moral compass. This society is lacking a moral compass because they are missing the framework that Islam provides. And this is the truth, my dear expensive brothers and sisters. There's great value in Islam. It adds value to human life. The Islamic Circle of North America is working extremely hard to promote this. And they hold many booths around the, the metroplex in, in, in car booths, uh, in garage sales. And, and different uh, trade booths that go on in different towns. They have a, a, a booth there with Quran material to give to Muslims. And one of the beautiful campaigns that are going on right now is the Why Islam campaign ad. That's being uh, billboards that are being uh, um, placed around the metroplex on major highways like I-35 and Trinity Mills. People, thousands of people are driving past there daily. And if they see uh, they see a billboard that says why Islam with a number on it, they would call that number. Just yesterday I was also informed that you know the CNN covered with the why Islam, just brief coverage they gave to the why Islam uh, campaign and the representatives that are answering the calls received calls throughout the entire day because of that. The entire day. This is an opportunity to reach out and every single one of us can be involved. Don't think that, oh, I lack knowledge, so I can't be involved, okay? If you can't be involved because of lack of knowledge, increase your knowledge, number one. Okay? Take Islamic Speakers Bureau classes, increase your knowledge, be representatives of Muslim, uh, of Islam. But, you can also contribute. You can also contribute. And this will go a very, very long way. So I'm going to encourage this community, inshallah, tomorrow, approximately 5 p.m., at Hyatt Regency on 75 at Campbell, there will be a fundraising dinner hosted by ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America, protecting our religious freedom and being true representatives of Islam through our actions. There are so many food pantries that ICNA, ICNA has established around the metroplex, feeding refugees, feeding poor people, underprivileged people. This is the work of Nabi Akhani This is an extension of mercy that I was speaking about. And we can all be a part of this. Each one of us can volunteer time, we all have the strength, and we all have the resources to contribute to this as well. This is the, the quality and characteristic of the people that will go gender, inshallah. So tomorrow, 5 p.m., we have a lineup of speakers. We have uh, Imam Khalid Briggs and Imam Zia will be there, and, and, and other speakers, I think, from Umdir will be the motivational speaker. I want to request this community, inshallah, to be there, be a part of this khayr, be a part of change, be a part of protecting our religious freedom in America, be a peacemaker, be an extension of the rahmah of Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah ta'ala give us all that. Thank you. Allahumma al-fi al-jami'i al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat wa al-ahiyyat wa 